In the last lesson, I introduced Perl, talked about the history of it, and I discussed how you can use it, how you can get it on your computer, and how you can run a few Perl scripts. In this lesson, we're going to build on that, and we're going to start by looking at the variables that Perl uses. Well, the first thing that you need to know is that Perl is a loosely typed language. That means that it tries to do the right thing. Numbers are interpreted as numbers, and strings are interpreted as strings. Perl has three basic data types that you're going to run into. Scalars, arrays, and hashes. Hashes used to be called associative arrays, but everybody calls them um, hashes nowadays. So it's built upon the strengths of other languages. For example, um, the lists come from Lisp, the hashes come from Orc, and the regular expressions come from Sed. There's also parts of C, Shell, C Shell, Pascal, and Basic, all rolled into a single language that tries to do many things. Let's take a look at each of these three different data types, the scalars, the arrays, and the hashes, and see how they're defined. So the scalars are preceded by a dollar sign. The dollar is supposed to remind you of the S of scalar, so that you know dollar scalar. So here I've defined four different variables, or the same variable four times. Notice that the first instance, I say $A is equal to 1. That defines it as a number, an int, perhaps. In the second line, $A is equal to the word 1. That defines $A as a string. I don't have to declare that it's a string or an int or anything else. I just say it's a string. And the third line, I say $A is equal to 1 in quotes. This one is a string. But Perl tries to do the right thing. I can actually convert this string to a number just by using it in the context where a number should appear. And then in the last case, $A, this is a string. That declares that as a string. So we can take a look at each of these. Here's some scalars in Perl. I already showed you, Perl minus E, dollar A is equal to 2, and dollar B is equal to 3, and dollar C is equal to A plus B. So if I, if I do this, then of course, Perl adds together A and B and gives me the result of C. I can also make a, a string. And when I add together a string and a number, Perl actually converts that string number 2 into a value, 2, adds it to B, and you get the result 5. If I change A from being a string number 2 to a string word 2 and add them together, now when I add them together, the string 2 doesn't have any value. And so I get C is equal to B. Notice that it doesn't append one to the other. For example, if I use the period, now I have the two strings appended one to the other. So we're not adding them in the same way that some languages do. We just um, assume that a string has zero value in that sense. And of course, I can set B to be a string as well, and I can join them together like that. Okay, so dollar sign means scalar. Scalar can be an int, it can be a floating point number. I can make my numbers to be uh, not just integers, I can make them be floating point numbers and add them together and get the right result. I can have strings, I can have floats, doubles, longs, all of those kinds of things, all with scalars. I don't have to define any, I don't have to say this is an int, Perl just tries to do the right thing. And almost always it does. What about 
those arrays. So arrays are preceded by an at sign. The at is supposed to remind you of the a in array. And arrays are enclosed by normal brackets. So my first example, I have an array of three ints, one, four ints even, one, two, three, four. Apparently I can't count. In the second case, I have an array of four strings, one, two, three, four, the same strings. And then in the third case, I have a mixed array. I have some ints and some strings. Remember, Perl is loosely typed, so it doesn't care if you mix together ints and strings. They're all basically handled the same way. So let's look a little bit more closely at arrays. Each element in an array is a scalar. So if I have this array here, which I abbreviated to A, at A is equal to my name is Rob. So I have four different scalars in this array. The first scalar is my, the second scalar is name, the third scalar is is, and the fourth one is Rob. Okay. In computer science, remember, we count from zero. So element zero is my, element one, name, element two, is, and so on. So I can directly address each of these elements because they're scalars. So I can refer to the zeroth element in the array by using square brackets like this to be my. I can refer to the first element in the array as being name, the second element as is, and the third element as Rob, and so on and so forth. Notice here I've used a special notation. So dollar $a, dollar pound $a means the last element in the array. And I'll talk more about that in just a little bit. Here's another example. I have an array, and each element in my array is a scalar. Just like we saw before, element 0 is 1, element 1 is a 2, element 2 is a 3, and so on. And I can refer to each of those elements by their position in the array. Notice that I have some special variables. So in this case, dollar hash $a is the index of the last position in the array. It's not, it's not the number of elements in the array. Let's take a look at this array. I've got four elements in this array, right? One, two, three, and four. What value does dollar hash $a have? Take a look at my other indices. Dollar $a0 is one. Dollar $a1 is two. Dollar $a2 is three. So dollar $a3 is four. That means that dollar hash $a has the value of three. It's one less than the number of elements in the array. It's the index of the last position. If you have an array with one element in it, dollar hash $a is zero. Aha, what value does dollar hash $a have if you have an array with no elements in it? Well, let's go take a look. We can do a very simple Perl test. I'll just clear the screen here. Here's some Perl. Let's just check that what I said is true. Here's an array with three elements. One, two, three. And we're going to print dollar hash $a. With three elements, dollar hash $a is two. With two elements, dollar hash $a is one. With one element, dollar hash $a is zero. And with no elements, dollar hash a is minus one. Minus one means that we don't have any elements in our array, okay? We have an empty array. We've looked at scalars, we've looked at arrays, let's take a look at hashes. Hashes are preceded by the percent sign. And they're also enclosed in regular round brackets. A hash represents a key value pair of data. So for example, my first name is Rob, my last name is Edwards, my job is a professor in computer science. 
A, you could describe a person in terms of their eye color, their height, their weight, their age, etc. Each of those are key value associations. And so for a hash, each key can only have one value. Well, that's not quite true, and I'll show you how to get around that problem. But basically, each key has a single value associated with it. You can have mixed, of course, data types, because Perl is loosely typed. You can mix integers and strings and floats, like I've done here. But don't forget, just like with arrays, each element in a hash is a scalar. So I can talk about the element that corresponds to first name by using a dollar sign, because dollar $h first name is equal to Rob. Rob is a scalar. Dollar $h job, that's a scalar. So each value associated with a key is a scalar. And I can do some kinds of simple arithmetic, like I've shown here, where I add up the values associated with my keys. The key in this case is a string, but the value associated with that key is a scalar. And so I can add those two values together. Let's take a look at this, and I'll show you. Here we go, Perl minus E, percent H, one, is two, and percent H, two, is three. And I've done that tip just to confuse you guys. And now I can print the sum of percent H, one, let me just do it this way, dollar H, one, plus dollar H, two, and I can print that result. There we go, five. So I've added those two values up. I can also print out the keys associated with my hash. My keys are one and two. And I can print out just the values as well. My values are two and three. Notice there's no spaces in between one and two or two and three because I didn't tell Perl to put any spaces in there. Okay, so we've got scalars, we've got arrays, which are lists of scalars, and we've got hashes, which are key value associations of scalars. Let's jump around a second and talk about references. So all data objects are stored on the heap. And so what that means is that if I create an array, here's my array, it gets some allocation on the heap. And I can get that array back by saying, um, here's my reference to my array. Notice that if I put a slash in front of my at sign, I get the position in memory where my array resides. This result is a scalar. This position in the heap is a scalar. So what that means is that I can talk about my array as an array, or I can get the reference to my array, the pointer to my array, that means the same thing. And that reference is a scalar. I can dereference my array using the at sign, and I can also talk about individual elements in that array using this unique to Perl notation of a minus sign and a greater than sign. It's supposed to remind you of an arrow pointing to something. So I can dereference my array either by looking at the minus sign, greater than sign notation, or by using the at dollar reference notation. The former is much more common that people use. Let me take a look at another example. Here's a hash. In my hash, I have three different keys 
and they have three different values associated with them. The same thing, I can get a reference to my hash by using a slash and then the percent hash. That gives me a pointer that points to that place in memory where that hash resides. I can now use my special Perl notation to talk about the types, the IDs, the values associated with this data um, pointing directly to the reference rather than using the hash. What does that mean? Well, remember that every element in an array is a scalar. I already walked through this. We talked about this. So what that means is that arrays can contain references to arrays. A reference to an array is a scalar. So if I create a reference to my array, then I can include that in another array. What an array two really contains it here in this case is something like this. We have the first part of array two, and then included within array two, we have a whole nother array, A, B, C, D. This is not the right syntax. You can't talk about element six in array two. That doesn't make sense. You can get the zero, one, two, three, fourth element in array two. That's the reference. And then talk about the individual members of that reference. But you can't immediately jump from array two to this part of the array. What I'm trying to demonstrate is that the array contains the first elements and then it contains a whole other array associated with it. So what I've showed you is how to create an array like this and then how to get the reference to it. In Perl, we have what are called anonymous references. So we can create our arrays like I've shown here, or we can use what in Perl are called anonymous references. We can change our round brackets to square brackets, and that allows us to actually directly access the reference. This is now an, a reference to an array, and the result is a scalar, not an array itself. Now we can talk about element three using our special Perl notation where we have a minus sign and a greater than sign. And that, of course, refers to element zero, one, two, three, the number four. Are you confused by, by numbering? That's partly deliberate, so you don't forget about the zeros. All right. Arrays can contain references. I showed you this already. We can put a reference in an array. And I showed you that we can have anonymous references to arrays like this. So we can combine this, and instead of saying array2 contains that reference, we can just include that reference within array2. Now array2 has the first four elements, 1, 3, 5, 7, which are just integers, and then the last element in the array is a reference to another array, all in one line. It's just not limited arrays. I can do the same notation with hashes as well. And for an anonymous hash, I use the special curly bracket notation to mean that I have a hash rather than an array. In this class, we've looked at the Perl data types, scalars, arrays, and hashes. In our next classes, we'll look and see how we can use those data types in writing Perl programs. I hope you'll join us.